Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria, and this is part three of my Altered Book mini-series in which we will be making an Altered Book junk journal step-by-step. Step. So in part one, we learned how to find the perfect book and what to watch out for when choosing a book. So I hope in the meantime, you have found your perfect book. <laughs> in part two, we have torn out pages and decided what kind of pockets are going to go where and optionally we have inked up the pages. You can find the link to the playlist for this mini series down below in case you've missed those first two videos. And by the way, I loved reading your comments on the past two videos and I'm so happy so many of you have decided to join me in this little book adventure, yay! <laughs> So in this part three today, we are starting the fun part of decorating the pages. I am so excited and also a bit nervous for some reason about this part, maybe because I've never decorated pages like this before. But we will learn together and we will see what works and what doesn't. <laughs> You can use any kind of papers for decoration. Maybe you have lots of ephemera stored in boxes that have been waiting to receive from love from you. Maybe you have old books with beautiful images you can use. Maybe you have downloads that you have already printed out that you can use. What I'm going to be using is some downloads from the Digital Collage Club as well as other bits because what I appreciate about being a member of the Digital Collage Club is that I don't have to think about which downloads I want to treat myself with trying to decide shall I purchase this one or this one. I have one membership that I can download how much I want and whatever I want and there is a, a huge array of over a thousand royalty free images to choose from New ones are being added by Tina every single week, so I think it is a really awesome deal. I have discount codes for you below in case you want to check them out. I have printed and cut out images from eight different downloads, which I will list below for you. So now I have a huge array to choose from. And it's kind of like a mixture of vintage, Victorian, shabby chic, that kind of thing. So let me show you some of those bundles from, from Tina's shop here. I usually don't like decorating from front to back. That's also not what I do in my other junk journals. So I will pick a page randomly and just start somewhere and then probably go back and forth and work on some pages. And I think that way the book will be more diverse because I'm guessing that my way of doing things or the pieces I use will change over time. So that way you won't see that change through the book. I don't know if that made any sense to be honest, but <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I mean. But I just, I just want this to be kind of random. So I'm going to just start out with a random page, which is going to be this one. And as you know, maybe from part two, we've just put these pockets together with paper clips because we need to still decorate. For example, I need to decorate this page before I glue this together. Otherwise it will make it really difficult. <laughs> 
And I think I'm going to start with something very easy just to kind of get into the flow of things. So these are already printouts that have beautiful collages on them. I, I think these are absolutely fabulous. So rather than tr me trying to collage something from the beginning, I will just use these <laughs> for now. Yes, I know I'm being lazy, but I really love these. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. So now I just have to decide, do I want them both on the back and the front? Actually, why not? Or is it too much? I don't know. <laughs> See, here we go. Not making decisions already. <laughs> no, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and go for it. And I think I like this part here with the Parisian Eiffel Tower. And yeah, I guess the straight edge is okay. I, 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 I thought I was going to tear it, but let's just leave a straight edge for now. So I don't want it to go all the way to the edge of my book page. I kind of like seeing a bit of my book page. So I will leave about, what is this, eighth of an inch. And I don't have to go all the way down to the end because the pocket is covering it. So maybe like here and then go here. So I will trim this. This I will trim with my paper trimmer because I'm not good with cutting straight. And of course, I will ink up the edges. Just these two because the others are hidden anyway. Now, if you don't make yours vintage style and you don't care about inked edges, then you're going to be saving a lot of time with this <laughs> project because the inking is going to take forever for everything. <laughs> So I'm just gonna glue this in. I'm going to use tacky glue. I know this is an art glitter glue bottle, but it's, I put tacky glue in it just because it has a thinner tip than the regular tacky glue bottles that I have here. And then we can close up our first pocket. So what Gail actually has done is she, when she decorates this part, she wraps the paper around the edge, which actually also looks really nice. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put it on there because I also actually like seeing this edge. And I think it is sturdy enough because we've glued this down. So that's what I'm gonna do, but you do whatever works for you. Now we'll glue this pocket down and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some glue right in the middle here where the spine is. And I'm hoping that that will help the page not to fall out over time. And then where else? So I need to glue this here, not too close to the edge. We don't want the glue squishing out and on the bottom. So now I need to decorate this part and I still kind I kind of feel like I want to keep these for pocket backgrounds. So I think I will look for something else for decorating this piece here. And I don't mind that maybe some of the book pages will show. I think that's totally fine. See, I really like this one actually. We can add something else. I also have my tearing ruler here. I will link those down below for you. They are sometimes hard to find. I will try to add a few links. Hopefully one of them will work in case you still need one of these. So now I'm just going to tear along here. And also here. That way I don't have to measure anything, which is really boring. <laughs> okay, that works. So what else? I think I need something still up here and I need something on the side here.
This one is a tough one because it's such a weird shape. Why don't I just tear around here? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> All right, let me try this. This is kind of like puzzles to see what you can make fit. Okay, that will do. I do still need to ink everything up and this one is just a tad too large. Yeah, okay, so I'll ink these up and then we can glue them down. I've glued the pieces down and this part is just too wide for me. So I'm using my tea dye and my blending brush to just go over that to take some of that off. Now I will want to probably embellish this more, maybe with lace or buttons or something. But I'm not going to do that yet because I want to first see how bulky it's going to get before I do that. So I think I might just do like the basics now. And then we can go back and embellish further depending on how plump this baby has become. <laughs> okay, so that is our first pocket. Yay. <laughs> All right, what do we do next? Let's do something different. Let's try this top loading pocket. So here for the background, I don't need to do anything because for this little piece, I don't think it's necessary. Or is it? No, because we're anyway going to be sticking something in. So I think we just need to decorate this part here. So what can we take? There's so many options and it's so hard to choose. <laughs> Maybe something neutral to start off, like that. Could just do like a collage of neutral papers to start out with. That's always a great base. Like that. And then we could use this here on top. I'll ink around all of these and glue them down and then we'll see what else we can add. Everything is glued down. For some reason I have, I feel very timid at this point making this. I don't know why, maybe just because I don't have a feeling for this book yet and I have no idea what it's going to be like once it's done. Let's glue this pocket down. So again, I'm going to be adding some glue here to the spine and then we do not glue the top <laughs> but we glue the side and the bottom okay that's pocket number two no it's not we have to still decorate this let's see i want a nice focal point she's really cute look at her love that could add maybe a label or something not sure the blue or the red what do you say there's red here and here. There's no blue. So the red would make more sense in theory. Let's just go with the red. So again, I will ink these up and glue them down and then we'll see where to go from there. I just remembered I also have this very cute doily. Oh, actually there's two. That's cool. These came in a happy mail quite a long time ago. So I think maybe this would also be really cute somehow if I can figure out how to add that <laughs> maybe it's just peeking out there let me try that so I'll just cut off a 
piece like this. Don't want too much. Like that. I think I'll just put it here and that kind of balances the red from here. I'll glue everything down like this. So there's that pocket done. And I'm assuming you don't need to watch me ink or glue because I think we all know how to do that and that's kind of boring. So I hope that it's okay you just see me kind of come up with the layout. What do we do next? Let's do this one, a full page. For this one as a background, I'm actually going to be using some real ephemera. So this is a vintage German, like a travel per diem calculation kind of sheet. <laughs> and I'm going to, oh, it tears off here. I'm gonna use this because I think it's really nice to also have some real, some or let's say some authentic vintage ephemera in here. So I'm going to tear this. I realize not everybody will have this kind of ephemera. I was just thinking maybe we can also add some sentiments on some of the pages. There's so many things we can do. Decorating is so much fun. Okay, so now we have a beautiful vintage background. What shall we use as a focal point? Oh, so cute. So cute. Adorable. Maybe this one. This one has butterflies. Maybe we could add some butterflies to this page then. It does need some more background. It's a bit harsh with the black. I need something softer. What about something pink maybe? That is nice. Let me cut this. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then maybe we add a butterfly somewhere there. Yeah, so I'm gonna glue this part down. I will ink it and then glue it and then we'll continue. Neutral one would be really pretty. Plenty to choose from. <laughs> Don't want yellow. Okay, I think one of these would be really nice. That's a hard choice. <laughs> Let's see this one here. This one, of course, would stand out the most because it's got some color in it. These are also really pretty. Oh my goodness, how do you choose? I really love this one because this one has some like brownish tones in it, which go really well with her hair. Yeah, I think I'll go with this one. Sometimes you just have to make a choice. <laughs> and there is no wrong choice. So where do we put this? I was watching a video recently by Jordan Clark. You, you might not know her. She does different kind of journaling and drawing. I'll link her channel for you below in case you wanna check her out. She seems to be such a sweet person. And in one of her recent videos, she was talking about her, I think uh, when she was doing art class or art school or something like that, and her teacher always used to say that making art is just making one decision after the other. That kind of stuck with me. That is so true because it's just a series of 
small decisions. As you can see now, I mean, I chose a butterfly, now I have to choose where to put it. So it's not like, this This kind of helps me to not be overwhelmed. When you think like, oh, you have to finish the book, it seems like such a huge task, right? But if you just see it as a whole bunch of little decisions that you've made, for me at least, it doesn't seem so overwhelming anymore because I just do one decision at a time. And over time, you will get better at making decisions and your choices will become more refined. And that is how we gain experience and become a better artist. So that really resonated with me. So I now decided to just put it there. <laughs> and this page I would call done. Okay, so we've made three. Let's do a different kind of page. Should we do this double page? <laughs> okay, these again, we have to start out with the background. So maybe I will use this for the background. Let me just see where the other pages where I used it. I don't want them to be too close together. No, that's somewhere completely different. Yeah, so I will do that. I will tear these or tear this one. And this one, I actually do want it to go almost all the way to the end because the pocket is so wide that you would be able to see in a little bit. What would be really fun to use here as well is if you've ever made any master boards and then maybe scanned them, you could cut them up this would be perfect for this project as well. Before I do that, let me just do it here as well. So that one is fine. I just need to correct the length. I'll ink around these and glue them in. So they're glued in and now we can glue down the pockets. Again, I will go along the spine as well. For these parts, I'm thinking maybe these would work. These are from the 100 Vintage Ephemera pack. I don't know if two might be too much. I will tear around these and then we'll try to fit some background papers and then see if it's too much or not. Okay, they look a lot better like this already. So let's see what kind of background papers we could add. This is of course from the vintage ephemera that I used on the other page. Mm -hmm. This is part of that collage sheet. I've said this many times, sticking to neutral colors, you can't go wrong at all. You just layer them, stagger them a bit, in my opinion, always works. I have my little box of tiny scraps here. Maybe I can find something. Oh, by the way, I started collecting these, these here from tea bags. I figure I could coffee dye them and then use them as little tags. Maybe put something over them. I think those would be quite fun. Would be great if I had any of those sewn little clusters left. Those would be really fun to add here now, but I don't have any, I didn't make any new ones. What a bummer. I have this little cluster. No, it's too much for this page. Some tickets. Half, half tickets. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm gonna glue these down and then I'm not sure if we need to add anything else. Wait, I just see here a tiny piece of very delicate lace. I might have to add that. I will leave these like this for now. I can always add something else later, but I think for now I'm happy with these. It's already starting to fill up a little tiny bit. <laughs> of course, once we add all the things to put in the pockets and everything, it will get a lot bulkier. Let's do this pocket page here. Again, this one's easy because we don't have to put anything on the back side. So let's glue that one shut. For this one, I will again add some authentic vintage ephemera. I have this like a receipt, I think it is in French. So if you're looking for real vintage ephemera, I got most of mine from Instagram. I will again list my sellers down below in the description box for you. And I also have a whole video dedicated to how to buy from Instagram and these sellers. So I will link that for you again as well in case you wanna see what that's all about. Okay, I'll ink this up, put it on, and then we'll see what else we can add. Maybe we can add one of these Victorian clip art images. I really like these boots. Oh, this one. Maybe one of these two boots. That would be nice. I mean, this green blue works really well with the green here, I think. But this one's nice too. No, I'll take this one. And maybe we can add some vintage postage stamps now that we have them sorted so conveniently by color. And if you want to see how I soaked my stamps and how I came to have them like this. There's also a video on that, which I can also link for you below. So I have them sorted by color, which now makes it a lot easier to find what I need. I only knew what I wanted. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking either I want something red to go with this or I want something green to go with the leaves. So here are my green ones. I would like something with a lady on it if possible or maybe the queen. I could try the queen. Yes, that's a good start. Maybe a little bit of a different green. This is actually an Austrian one. The church. Yes, I like that one too. And as you might know, I always like to work in threes. So let me find one more. Maybe this one. Let's do that. Does it need anything else underneath? I'm just wondering. Maybe you wonder why I sometimes, or why I ink up some images and some I don't. For example, this one I've inked up, but this one I haven't. 
And the reason is that some of these I want to blend into the background, like this one. I don't want this one coming out, but our focal point I want to stand out more, which is why I inked it. And the reason why I chose the green stamps is because also I want them push I want to push them visually more into the background. If I would have chosen the red ones, they would have stood out more and competed with this rose. But I really wanted this rose to stand out and it being the only red element now pops a lot more with these green stamps rather than red ones or any other bright color that would come more at you. Now this again is a bit too white for me, so I will Go over that a little bit with my tea dye. Again, maybe we add a sentiment later, but for now, I think this is good to go. Let's do another whole page. Let's do this one here on the, or let's do this one here on the left. I've been doing mostly the ones on the right. <laughs> I just love this. How cute is this? tea set here. It's really cute. And this I love as well. I'm wondering if I should tear around her. That way we would see a little bit more of that. You can also move this. Then that's right at her head. That's not good either. <laughs> hmm, maybe I'll just leave it like this to find something that we could put here. We could just put some of this collage paper there. That would be quite easy. No, I'm not sure about this one here. I love the blue together, but maybe I could find something else. We have this one. That is very blue on top. I feel like if I do that, it needs something blue down here or here to balance that. But we could definitely work with that. Yeah, let's try that. Tear this down first. So these are glued down and I'm thinking maybe we can just use this butterfly from the postcard and put it down here and that way that would balance the blue a, bit, a little better. That is what it needed. Could also use something here as well. Maybe one of my blue stamps would work here. Maybe something with a number. I have some Canadian ones here. They look very vintage to me. That just balances it more, don't you think? We have some blue going on around here now. And what this does is it, it makes the eye move to the different parts of the page. If we don't have this, our eye goes like this because there's nothing here to hold our attention. But by putting this there, there is a point of interest, so our eye will now wander more around the page. Just thinking if I want more than one there, like a little cluster. This is a German one. I actually like that better. Gives more interest. Yep, let's just do that. So that's what the final page now looks like. Really pleased with that one. Next, let's do one of the ones with the pockets where we folded them down. This one. Oh, this is the first one. So maybe a bit more pressure on this one because it'll be the first one and, that, and we want that to be very nice, right? I mean, we want all of them to be nice, but this one needs to be especially nice. Great, now I'm putting so much pressure on myself. That's not a smart idea. For the inside of the pocket, I'm going to use this here. And since it's not long enough, I'm just gonna, 
I have to cut this here anyway and then use a bit of that for that other part. Really love these tones right here. I want a torn edge on this side as well. Oh, I have a small piece here that I can use. That's perfect. So once these are glued in, we can again we can again <laughs> close this. When you put the glue here in the spine, don't put a huge like a, a fat bead there because then I don't know how easy it will be to turn the pages. For example, I wouldn't do it with your glue gun. <laughs> I think that would be too much. And now I need to decorate this part. I think I wanna use one of these three images as focal points. They're all adorable. I think I want this one. I don't know why. Maybe, yeah, maybe because it, the colors go really well together, this yellow. Now we need some background for this. This one would work well. It's in the same color range. Could start by tearing this one to the right shape. I'll ink up just the outside edge. We have this scrap left over from the collage sheet that we could probably add here. Mm -hmm. We have this left, which I could just add like this. And now we just need something here. I found this here. I think it will work really well. Yep, I like that. So I will ink around just the outer edges and then glue things down. And of course I'll ink around this image as well. So I've glued all the background down and I made sure that all the edges meet up nicely. And what I was thinking so that this stands out a bit more I have recently purchased some lace. So this is a really beautiful golden color. And I thought this would go well underneath. So I think if I just have a little edge showing underneath, that would make that just pop more. And that, especially given that it's the first page, I think it's nice to have something just pop. Actually, I think I'm gonna glue it down first Oh, this is the wrong side, by the way. I'll glue it down and then it'll make it easier to stay in place when I cut it. I should probably be using Fabri-Tex or 3-in-1 glue for this, but I'm just going to use my tacky glue. I think it should be fine. For this, I actually am going to use my three-in-one glue. I would not want this coming off at a later point. Is that worthy of a first page? What do you think? <laughs> I hope it is. Can't really change it now. <laughs> no, my phone has just warned me that my battery is dying. I think we've done plenty for today. Let's do a very quick recap. So we've done this one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pages. That's not bad. I can already see, look at this, it's already bulking up. So this is why it's important to tear out a lot of pages. 
So I hope you you were either crafting with me or that you will do this now on your own. Just go for it. Don't overthink things and just have fun playing with your elements. And now it's time to reveal the winner of my recent 20,000k subscriber giveaway. But first, thank you so much to every single one of you. Thank you for all your amazing and humbling comments. They really mean the world to me. So without further ado, let's see who the random name picker chose. There were 575 unique comments and the winner of 10 handmade tags and some extra goodies is Love Rain 66. Congratulations! Yay! Please send me an email to 49dragonflies at gmail.com with your address so I can send you your prize. Again, thank you everyone and hope to see you in the next video and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it despite not winning this time. <laughs> Love you guys! Mwah, mwah.